right, good morning. Hello, children here at Children's Praise at New Life Presbyterian Church. It's a great joy to be able to do these videos with you uh, week after week. Uh, you're probably going to be watching this video the day after Christmas. We're recording a little early, um, but uh, I will be there. I'll actually be off that week. Um, and I want you to uh, finish the candle. we got to finish it. Christmas is over, but we can still finish this last candle, which would have been uh, lit on Christmas Eve uh, earlier this week. Um, do you remember what they are? Do you remember how uh, the, the candles go? You have hope. We'll light them again. Hope is here, the first candle, looking to Jesus. And then you have the second one, which is love. Looking to Jesus, which is advent. Remember what the word, we're probably going to remember what the word advent is now. It means to, to arrive or to appear. And this one's peace. And the very last one, if you can see it here in the camera shot, is this center one. And this is, uh, we light this one on Christmas Eve, which already happened. But remember, this is white. This is the white, big white center candle, uh, which represents purity. Purity means to be clean. It means um, uh, to have no stains, maybe, in your clothes. Or when you're outside playing and your hands are all dirty with uh, mud or soot, you wipe it off, and it's clean, it's pure, purity. Uh, it's a white candle. It's clean. It has no blemishes or marks. So that's another symbol, another one of the final of the five candles to look forward or represent Jesus Christ. And so Christmas is over, but I want to look at another passage in Luke, because we've been reading a little bit through Luke, and talk about uh, something that happens right after Christmas, right after Jesus is born. One of the first things we're told about him uh, in his life. And it's a very short part. Now you remember we were talking about how uh, the shepherds were visited by an angel. That angel had a huge multitude of angels with him. And the people that saw them, the shepherds, they were petrified. They were afraid. But the angels announced a good message, a gospel to the shepherds and said that they were actually not to be afraid, but they would have peace, which is that fourth candle. Um, what follows right after that story about having peace in Jesus comes uh, with this candle dealing with purity, cleanliness. And here's the verse. It goes on in Luke and says this. Uh, At the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus. And that word Jesus means God saves. That was his name. That's the name uh, that captures the whole purpose of his life, why he came to save us. And his name was Jesus, the name given to him by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. This was all planned. And it says this, And when the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. That's it. I just want to say that. So this is eight days uh, after Jesus was born. He was circumcised, which is what God commanded in his law. And then after that, he had to be presented, uh, which is what Luke calls for his purification, for his cleansing. And so I want to understand what that means uh, for our lesson today, that what happens after Christmas? Because Christmas is over. We've celebrated that Jesus has come. We're going to enter into a brand new year. It's going to be January, and that new year starts a whole new chapter in your life, in my life. What are you going to do after Christmas? Well, we are going to make mistakes, and we're going to stray from God, and we're going to come back to God, and the whole course of our life is doing things like that. But what Jesus did at the very beginning of his life is he went and did exactly what God commanded him to do. His parents had him circumcised, which is what the law commanded him to be to do. And then he entered into this thing called purification, that the whole course of his life was Jesus remaining white or clean or pure. So I want you to think of this. I want you to think of Jesus walking through his whole entire life as a young, young little boy, all the way up to an adolescent or a young man to an adult. And in a certain way, he managed to live life all the time without ever getting any stains on his clothes. Because he was always doing what this Bible verse said. He was obeying God's commands. And that's called being pure. 
If you don't obey God's commands, it's like being dirty. So, I know I can get dirty. I get stuff on my clothes all the time. Maybe you got stuff on your clothes when you're playing outside and you're making a mess. I bet you can't go many days without making a big mess on your clothes or on your knees if you're crawling around outside or playing in the dirt or coloring or painting or eating and getting food and spilling stuff. We make mistakes all the time. We get dirty all the time. We have to take showers and baths because we get dirty. But here's the image here we have with Jesus is that he lived his whole life and he never really got dirty in the way that he made mistakes before God. He never made any mistakes. He never sinned. He was pure. He was white. God saw him as being white like this candle. He had no marks or blemishes because um, he was always obeying God's command. So that's the point I want you to think of this morning is that what happened right after Christmas? Jesus continued to live a pure life. He began living a pure life, the exact opposite of you and me. So after Christmas, we are going to make mistakes. We are going to do what the Bible calls sin. Sin. We should talk about sin. Talk about that with your leaders today. What really is sin and how does it make us dirty? And why is this candle white? And why doesn't Jesus have any sin? Because the verse we read in Luke, the very beginning of his life, he was always doing God's commandments. That's why he's our Savior, because he, he obeyed the Father. He obeyed God for us. He did something we couldn't do. And so that's why when God sees you, when he sees your heart, it can be as white as this candle because we identify with Jesus. We trust in him. So that's the reason, not just for the season of Christmas, but for now, the whole course of the rest of this year. Why Christmas and why January and February and summertime and fall? All the mistakes you might make this year are all gone because Jesus never made one of them. And he lived for you and for me. So that will be it for this week, and I will see you again next week.